Hello, Steve White, Trekboy89 for Steve Arts 89 Well, we've had some good news, more good news from um, Star Trek in regards to Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Uh, Variety, which already did one article about the um, announcement, has done another article about um, how Star Trek is boldly going back to its roots. Now, this was hinted in in the little announcement video that um, Anson Mount and Ethan Peck and Rebecca Ramone did. Um, where he said we're going to make a classic Star Trek at, that gets back to talking about optimism in the future. Um, I read a lot into that, um, and I was supposed to, we were supposed to, but they are now actually supporting that with a bit of PR. Now, in the past, the same people have lied about um, things that they were going to do or not do on Discovery and Picard, so I'm weary, but... I'm also choosing to be optimistic because I'm just not going to get really excited yet and then I won't be really disappointed later. And if it is good and they do hold to this, I will be able to enjoy it and I'll just be able to build on that enjoyment rather than getting excited and then being disappointed because um, Picard was a bit of a letdown. I was expecting the worst and we got fairly bad. Um, and Discovery I was expecting good and we got pretty bad. Um, so. It was sort of harsh, but um, I'll go into the article because, you know, um, I know not everyone hates Discovery, not everyone hates Picard, I get that, um, but a lot of people do. Um, so basically what they said was we are going to do two things. We're going to go back to the optimistic tone and we are going to actually go back to not just the tone of the original series, but the format. We're actually going to do episodic episodes. So... Although we will continue to have story and character development that will develop over the series, the season, um, which they already did in Next Gen or um, Deep Space Nine and Voyager. So this is not new, um, but we're going to go back to that. So we're going back to the themes and tones of the original series and we're going back to, um, I guess, the story structure of the Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, but they're probably not going to re return to the... Um, a and B story thing, which they did heavily on Next Gen, which didn't always work. It really should have depended on the story, not just been a standard. But, um, so let me try and find some quotes. Okay, we're going to try to harken back to some classical Star Trek values to be optimistic and to be more episodic. And this is Akiva Goldsman talking. Now, Akiva Goldsman, um, I, I believe he loves Star Trek. Um, I just don't think he's a very good writer. Whereas Kurtzman never liked Star Trek, um, he was a Star Wars fan, and it was the combination of Kurtzman and Orky, who, um, I don't know if you say it, if that's how you say his last name, um, Orky, I've heard it said that way. Um, he was the Star Trek fan, and Kurtzman was the Star Wars fan, and between the two of them, the idea was that they would create a Star Trek that was more, with the films, um, the reboot films, they would create a Star Trek that was more, um, more for general fans, um, that sort of adhered to Star Trek enough, but was um, more open for other people to enjoy, which kind of worked. I lo I really loved the first film, and within the context of an alternative universe, I was fine with it, and as an action series rather than a science fiction series, I was fine with it. I thought it was like a gateway thing into Star Trek, and I was fine with all of that. And then they sort of let all that go with the next film, we won't talk about that. But, um, so Orky on his own there's issues there, just like Akiva Goldsman on his own. There's issues there, but it's not that he doesn't love Star Trek. It's not that I don't think he has good intentions. Um, I'm just not sure he can actually do it. But if he's got other people to work with, he, it's quite possible. So that's where I have the optimism of it can be done. This could be a good show. This could work. Within the frames of it's a reboot and, um, you know, we're not trying to actually say that this is... Pike from the original series, and this is the Enterprise from the original series because it's not. If you just think of it in those terms, I feel like you can actually watch it and you actually maybe even enjoy it if the writing and the story development is good and the character development is good. Um, but if they're still trying to say it's canon, then every second of frame of footage you're going to be looking at going, this is not Pike, you know, this is not the original series Pike Enterprise, blah blah blah. So I don't know, you have to. 
I don't know how to manage that if they're still saying this is canon and this is not some alternative universe version or something that was created by the Red Angel or something um, and all the all the um, faffing with time she did. But I'm getting totally off track. But there's only a few quotes I wanted to read here anyway. Because <laughs> they talk about how Discovery went in that direction of having um, whole season long serial serialised stories and that they will be able to do stories on this Star Trek that they couldn't do on those shows. Um, and he uses the example of shore leave. You couldn't do like a shore leave episode in the middle of an arc like that. And that's true. Um, so this is good. Because they can still have an overlying story arc for a whole season or for a whole series. And they can also have, have character development and character arcs over the sort uh, over, you know, the whole se season or whole series. But they can have individual stories that start and stop so you can check in. Because part of the problem with the... Discovery and Picard is, and um, Jesse Gender said this really well, um, basically, I never want to sort of watch any individual episodes of Picard or, or Enterprise, um, Discovery, because I feel like I'm in the middle of something. I don't feel like I can just watch one episode, even if there's parts, and this is now me, even if there's parts of those episodes that you enjoy, you sort of, the other elements sort of stop you from viewing that on its own, whereas one of the great things about Star Trek was you could always just tune in and watch an episode. Um, you didn't have to watch a whole season. And there's a lot of people who binge TV shows, um, and these are not necessarily fans, these are more general fans. They'll binge a whole series, think, oh, that's good, go off and never think about it again. They won't revisit the episodes, they won't go buy the toy or the calendar or the model or the figure or whatever from that episode they love, that particular favourite episode or whatever they return to. Or And, and I think they've realised, oh, gee, we got a lot of these general fans in who binge the series... Um, and they never watched it again, never bought any merchandise, and we need people to watch the shows again, return to the show again and again, like the other Star Treks, which, I don't know, if you're a fan, you've watched the original series Next Gen Deep Space Nine multiple times, you've got your favourite episodes you go back to, and you know that new fans, they're just not, they just don't function the same, and that way of watching the show, which I'm not invalidating, and you can like the show, and you can watch it that way, but it doesn't make a lot of money for the network. If you watch it once and then don't go back to it and you don't buy merchandise because there's nothing, no one thing in it that you sort of attached yourself to or was um, uh, or are nostalgic for. So those are elements they need to take into consideration. It looks like they have. It looks like they're saying, okay, we need to change this and make it this way because this is what worked and this is what made us money before um, and the rest doesn't. So um, where's some more quotes? Um, I imagine it to be closer to the original series than even Deep Space Nine, Gosp and Save the Strange New Worlds. We can really tell closed-ended stories. We can find ourselves in episodes that are totally of a piece of this type of episode that Strange New Worlds might attempt, that Discovery or Picard might not. Gosman says it's hard to do a Shore Leaves episode in the middle of a long serialised arc. So, um, and I hope I'm not just repeating things I said. Like, he used the example of Sit on the Edge of Forever, where basically in one episode Kirk is devastated by that situation, if you haven't seen the episode, I'm not going to spoil it, you know, 30 years or 50 years later, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Um, but then the next episode, he's back to normal. I'm like, yeah, well, true, but there was always the sense that um, he was married to the ship and could never sort of be involved. So there were little character things that ran through the, the original series. It's not as clean cut reset as, say, the X-Files was. Um, but yes, they never really talk about Edith again, I don't think. Uh, maybe in the books, maybe in um, the comics, but no, in the series they don't talk about her again. So that's true. So being able to reflect on things that have happened would be good. This is what worked for Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and I don't know why um, they wouldn't do that anyway. So that I mean, I, I don't know why they thought they had to do a serialized story to do this because you can have all those things working outside of the actual stories. Um, and what else? I'm sure there's more quotes. It was interesting. Um, well, they go into, they talk to um, Ethan Peck as well. And I got this sense too. He was going to a lot of um, conventions trying to like push. We want to show, we want to show, hey, we're nice, we're fun, we love you all. You know, we're, we're, we're coming down to the, the grassroots levels and talk to the fans. We, you know, we give us a show, you know, go, go email the studio, tell them that you want to show. And that's what they did. And I think which only just really occurs to me now, part of the beauty of the Pike show is that it is very much like the original series. 
it was produced by Lucille Ball's company, Desilu, and then Paramount bought the studio and they wanted to get rid of Star Trek right away. And the fans came up and they made a mailing-in campaign, they did a letter-writing campaign, they literally protested and picketed the studios in the old 60s um, fashion, and they got a second series, and they got a third series um, by doing this. And then, unfortunately, the, st the studio screwed over Gene Roddenberry, he warped, and um, then people sort of just let the show go because they knew they couldn't do it without him and he wasn't coming back and he never really came back until they offered him a syndicated series in the 80s with Next Gen where there was no network. That's how bad they burned him. Um, so, <laughs> I keep on going off on side things. Um, <laughs> so, I'm feeling optimistic because basically the same thing happened with um, Pike. The fans said, we want this. They created web, um, Facebook pages and YouTube videos and they just campaigned for it and the studio couldn't, it couldn't ignore it. And Kurtzman, who said he didn't want to, would, would not do a series with a male captain, it was the only way he'd do a series if it was a female captain and didn't have any males, basically, um, in command or in any sort of um, authority, has turned around and now they're doing this Pike series when, you know, unless they give him a sex change <laughs> in between the, the end of... Um, the last episode of Discovery and this new episode, he's going to be a male captain in charge. And that's okay. We can have both. Do another series with a female. That's fine. I love Captain Janeway. Who doesn't? I mean, we can have both. Make Berman the captain of Discovery. I don't care. Because, you know, we can have both. You don't have to have one or the other. Um, there's multiple series. So, yep, so the rest of the interview just goes into, and you can read the whole thing, obviously I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, they basically just go into how the actors have been dealing with um, sort of petitioning for a new show and celebrating and all that, and Kurt, um, Akiva and Kurtzman, that they're basically promising they're going to go back to the themes of the original series and the episodic nature of the former Star Trek series, and while retaining the story arcs and character arcs that were spread over seasons, which started sort of in Next Gen and more in Deep Space Nine, um, certainly in Enterprise. And this is a good thing. I'm feeling optimistic. I do think this can be good, but only really if they acknowledge that this is in an alternative universe, which would explain why everything looks and sounds and is different. Um, I can enjoy a new Star Trek show, a different Star Trek show. I grew up reading the Gold Key comics, which looked nothing like the original series, and the DC comics, which looked nothing like the movies of the original series. And there was an excitement and a joy in that difference. And I, I, I do get what Star Trek is, and I do value it. And a lot of people would lump me into the haters who, who just want to stay in the past and hate women and hate minorities and all this crap, which they put on anyone who doesn't like the new shows. And that's a minority of people who don't, who are like that. But the majority just have philo philosophical problems with how they are treating the universe and changing it to reflect more today rather than it being an optimistic view of the future, which people want to look forward to instead of just, oh, we just it's just like watching the news, basically. So, again, I'm ranting about other stuff, but I'm passionate about Star Trek and I have a lot to say. And sometimes I just try and squeeze in one video try and, instead of doing three or four. So I'm going to end now because it's gone way longer than I wanted. Hopefully some people have listened to the end. Uh, feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm feeling optimistic. Um, I'm going to go with that. But I'm going to keep my excitement at a level where I'm not going to get hurt too bad if this turns out to be another Picard. I think that's smart. I don't think that's bitter or hating. I think that's just smart. Thanks. Bye.